So I can't believe you're up here. <laughs> Who are you and what are you doing with this van? I'm Scott, N6MI. I've been a ham radio operator since 1969. I like to do some contests, generally five or six contests a year, and I like it to be a nice arrangement. So well, about 15 years ago, my friend Tom K6VCR said, hey, you know, you could buy a television news van. It's on eBay. And I bought it. Yeah, that's really cool. I can't believe you have this thing all the way up on Fraser Mountain. You mind taking us on a tour inside? First, that's not enough. You need stuff. And I, my stuff is in these various containers that I have, and it, it varies by contest. Um, I have antennas, I have parts that go in the van, I have dummy loads, I have, of course, a soldering kit to repair things because something always breaks. And I, I usually operate as a team, not always, I do solo operations. The team, what we did today, this is in July of 2024, then an operation with Paul, W6PNG. Paul's a soda operator, very active, and we're on Fraser Peak, 8,013 feet. At least it is up there. It's probably a few feet smaller right here. And we run 500 watts from the interior here with a large antenna. Now it depends on the, on the contest. This is the favorite part of this van. This is a Wilbert van mast pneumatic mast, there's a compressor that's underneath the van, and it can hold 300 pounds, so I could take both of you guys, put you on either side, take you up for a ride, and bring you down. But I happen to use, right now, a JK CS3, which is a tri-bander, 10, 15, and 20. And I've got a couple things that look like guys, but they're not. It's a 40-meter inverted V, and it's an 80-meter inverted V. It doesn't need guys, it doesn't need outriggers, it's been through uh, as much as 65 mile an hour winds. I don't like to be out in 65 mile an hour winds because it blows your shirt off and makes you cold and all that kind of stuff. But let's look inside the van. I'm excited to see this thing. Uh, all right. all right. This is a 24 hour contest. It takes a couple days to set up. It takes about six and a half hours of hard work. Inside, this is where the television guys used to work, but we have racks built in here and i have power um, and which is powered at many different things within the van itself this tells you how long the engine's been running there's a mast up light when the mast is up if you're running with a car this is a tuner so i bring in the i have a coax running down red tube outside to protect it from the sunlight runs into here i use an ft DX101D, because Sherwood says this is the best receiver for contests that you can get today. I've had a Flex, I've had an Helicraft, and I get whatever the flavor of the month is. Down here, we have an ACOM uh, amplifier, puts out about 500 watts. That's about the amount of power that my uh, Honda can do comfortably, and I, I just don't want to lift a heavier generator. I've had this Honda EU2200 or 2000 for uh, 14 years. Down here, we have a 10 gigahertz. Oh, sorry, that's just a normal microwave for heating up stuff. You want that. This is an extra screen so that the Yesu um, uh, face shows up here. You can see your waterfall display and, and go from guy to guy. We have a, uh, a, a humidity and temperature gauge in here. The low was 64, high is 82. That's as nice as it gets. Uh, I usually have a computer right here, but I packed it away before you all showed up. I use, uh, I happen to like a, an N3 uh, custom ZR6 NZ. I have a couple of those that are very nice. Of course, the coffee maker, that's mission critical, isn't it? There are actually four tubes, four, four coaxes come down from up top, and I bring them down on a switch right there so I can uh, put whatever the antenna is of the day. I have a rotator. I use a Yesu uh, rotator on uh, low bands, connection with that. I have another Yesu rotator. I use 10 gig. It's a different, uh, different type because it goes two different directions, satellite style. That's the low band station. Wait, miss all the junk for just a second and look over here. This is an ICOM 9700. Use that in the, in the VHF contest. 100 watts on two meters, 75 watts on 432, 10 watts on 1296. Have a 30 watt amp on 1296. Don't use it that much. This is the new Pride of House. This is the ICOM uh, 905, IC905. 
not yet tested. I mean, it has been tested. It's tested in the in the driveway, but it's going to go out on the August 2024 10 gig first weekend, and we'll make some contacts. This is power system for uh, this rack. You can actually use work two guys in here if they don't mind being really friendly, and we have during the June VHF contest. There's lights everywhere. This is a pole. Uh, couldn't come through the roof. It's a hole in the roof, so I can actually manually operate a, uh, a small antenna. For example, we, we do this in tea hunting. We operate a four-element Yagi a lot of times manually. That's a custom thing. I've got four whip antennas on the roof for when I'm driving around if I want to be operating on, on 1296 or 432 on the Cactus Network or something. I can do that from, uh, from here. <clears throat> Over here, we have gauges for the pneumatic system. We have a reservoir tank, actually two tanks, and we have uh, a the mast, which is another tank. Technically, it can go up to 35 pounds. They don't keep it that that much. Uh, this is a UPS uninterruptible uninterruptible power power supply. Well, that's easy for me to say. There are three deep cycle batteries in here, so we can run uh, a 100 watt contest and use the UPS to run the computer during that, and we've done that sometimes. And all of the stuff that you see on the ground gets packed in here. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. It just has to go a certain way, and if you if you do it wrong, you're missing five boxes. You've got to start over and go through that. Let's look up the mass for a second. The red coax, this is, this is, it's a cover. It's a plastic cover. It's a, it's a sun shield that protects the coax that's inside it. I didn't slide the coax in there when I bought it. It was still in there and I checked out the coaxes and they were still better than anything I had in a plain old generic coax. So I still use them, but I have cut the ends off both sides to put good end connectors on there and make sure that I get maximum. This is the rotator cable. I just flop it around. And then the you can see I use uh, rock climbing gear to, to put the antennas off on the side, the two inverted Vs, and I put them depending on the contest and how much room I have. I try and protect the traffic that goes by, and the people and the kids, I don't want anybody to get hurt. Out here, it's not too bad. As long as I'm not on the road, I can do anything I think I want with respect to the antennas, and they, they work fine here at 8,000 feet. Okay, it's, the, the question's been asked, how do I get this antenna down? And I thought about it, I can't remember. Ah, I do remember. You can see how I connect the, uh, this case, 40 and 80 meter dipoles up here. I just strap them up there on uh, a, a strap that's a rock climbing strap. Could be rope, just something that's not not uh, conductive. And then I uh, use a care beater to hook in because it makes it easy to flip in. And then I take a little run of coax, use more than I need, but little run of coax that goes into the permanent tube of coax, goes down here. So probably 12 feet plus maybe 75 feet. You know, probably have 90 feet of coax up there on each of the various antennas. So that's the tour. Be sure to sign up and subscribe to this channel. This was really cool. I have never seen this much radio in one van before, let alone on top of a mountain. I hope you enjoyed the tour. I know I did. And uh, we'll see you on the next mountain.